volume. But before we discuss exactly how we're going to do it, let's first take a look at what another technology company has, to, uh, has been able to revitalize their business through the introduction of the consulting services. Yes, and actually, they, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, as you have may guess, it is IBM. IBM, back in the 1980s, was the industry leader of the hardware and software industries. But however, when it came to the 1990s, IBM has suffered severe loss in its revenues because of the fierce competition. And that is when this company decided to make an insightful decision to introduce the consulting services business to differentiate itself from its peer competitors. As we have seen here, this business has been a huge success for IBM. After two years implementation, the consulting services business has been able to contribute about 15% of the revenue. And today, it has become the largest revenue stream for IBM, which is about 60% of the total revenue. Speaking of revenue, actually, IBM has been able to enjoy a very steady revenue flow over the years. How does that happen? Actually, IBM has a very diversified customer structure. About 22% of the and about 22% of the revenue actually comes from small and medium enterprises, which is very interesting because that that is exactly the customer group that Glenhouse has not been able to target yet. So why don't Glenhouse start it now? Actually, Glenhouse stands at the perfect place to start the uh, consulting services for the SMEs. As we know, there are about 99% of the business in Canada that are SMEs. And the Canadian government is doing a lot they can to help these SMEs grow. And these SMEs have been able to recognize the importance of technology implementation in their business to increase the efficiency. That is why they are willing to spend about 2% of their revenue, annual revenue in telecommunication budget alone. And these SMEs need our services, especially the consulting services, because the telecommunication products are very difficult to understand, and especially the products of uh, Bell and Rogers, which are the uh, which are the government shareholders. So that is why uh, Glendale should utilize the expertise of your shareholders and start this wireless consulting services for the SMEs, and also to expand the current the Bell Health services to provide the industry solutions and radio solutions for the SMEs. And we know that telecommunication industry is a highly standardized industry, which means that it is very hard for a company to differentiate itself from the peer competitors. And as the chart shows here, as the chart shows here um, Glencal has been able to provide the most comprehensive services so far. But however, your competitors are doing very well to you, and they can catch up with you anytime if they choose to provide similar services. So actually, the best way to different yourself is to start doing something that nobody has ever done before, which is the consulting services, and especially the SME consulting services. And actually, introducing SMEs into your customer uh, profile is, has well be beneficial to Glenn Hall. Because as we see here, the most of customers of Glendale concentrated on the large companies in volatile industries, which are oil and gas and utilities and mines. And by introducing SMEs into a customer base, you will be able to have exposure to a lot of different industries, which diversifies the industry-specific risk. And based on the market size and uh, our estimation, with uh, the, the very conservative projection of the revenue of the first year is about $170,000. And by the fifth year of in implementation, Glenhouse has reached about $500,000 in the revenue. Now let me hand it over to my colleague Evan to talk about offer. Sure. So once we've kind of expanded into new diversification for the industry, we wanted to look into diversification of geographical regions as well. And so when you think about expanding a business into another country, the immediate thought is China or India because of the large market attention. But we want to take a different direction. Clintel um, has core competencies in Canada and in North America. So we wanted to stay in North America, and specifically the United States. The United States is rolling out an initiative called, um, called FirstNet that is a massive public 
safety communications network, basically allowing all first responders, maybe police, firefighters, ambulance, anybody to communicate solely on one communications network as opposed to competing with the large civilian uh, population for cell service. And so there's four main areas for this, and that's in crowded cities, very rural areas where cell coverage is very difficult to maintain, um, in communicated response for terrorist attacks, and also through natural disasters. So we believe that there's a very significant potential to combine with this massive market to provide services for FirstNet in the United States. Now, what FirstNet is exactly looking for are vendors who can provide LTE coverage, who can provide radio access network coverage, uh, which is exactly where we wanted to move in with uh, Clinton. Specifically, we believe that the satellite system, although divested previously, could come back and make a big impact to uh, basically put in VSATs on the ground or some of the satellites that can provide this coverage in rural areas such as Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Michigan, areas that I discussed before, who have, come, have a difficulty bringing in coverage across uh, large, unpopulated territories. So we believe that putting some of these VSATs on the ground can bring in about $25,000 per year, Canadian dollars per year, uh, per VSAT. However, it's difficult to estimate exactly how much the US government would want from us, which is why we maintain conservative approaches for now to break evens at about one and a half years of implementation. However, there is the significant upside that involves back in Canada. The, the big point of this American First Net is not profitability, but exposure. We want to prove ourselves that we're great in the U.S. with the satellite and RIN exposure so that when Canada eventually takes on FirstNet, we can be a sole provider there. Canada is uh, struggling in their telecommunications department, um, specifically providing well-being for the country. And so with that, coupled with some of the connections, the growing number of connections between the U.S. and Canada in the mobile sector, provides a great opportunity for FirstNet to take advantage of Canada. We believe that proving ourselves in the U.S. will cry a great case when we pitch to the Canadian government that we can not only do the RAN satellite uh, solutions for Canadian FirstNet, we can also take in the LMRS. So again, difficult to assume, difficult to work on what the cost estimates of that would be, um, but we believe that there is the opportunity for significant potential as we become major players in that space. So I'm going to pass it over to Ryan, who's going to talk more about how Glintel can uh, really <coughs> navigate through the changing space. Great. I need help. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. So as we begin to look into the telemarketing industry and think about the telecom industry and think about just what it means uh, to be successful, we quickly came across how rapid innovation and expansion of technology is. As we begin to look into specifically 5G research, uh, preliminary reports from Samsung and other uh, telecommunications companies indicates that 5G could be uh, hugely impactful in terms of a large leap forward, more so than we've seen before. So even more than maybe the 3G to 4G, 5G could outpace wireless and radio, um, radio capabilities currently. And while that could be a threat to Gentel's current uh, business practices, we also see it as an opportunity. I'd like to introduce you. Sorry. I'd like to introduce you to Altius Star. This company, uh, not to be too technical, but this company is seeking to revamp and disturb, honestly, the wireless uh, industry and wireless carriers in general. Specifically, uh, the wireless industry currently is dependent on a central location uh, that then sets up nodes around it. And in each of those nodes, it's very expensive to implement the base system. Uh, necessary to expand that wireless signal out into that node. What Altimstar has done is they've created a uh, Ethernet front hall system where they're able to create a cloud uh, radio access network in those nodes that eliminates the need for uh, all of that infrastructure in the beginning. In essence, it cuts operating expenses by 67% and capex by more than 33%. We believe that this is an opportunity uh, for Gentel to step in as a potential partner as they seek to expand into the Canadian markets. Altiostar is an opportunity uh, for Gentel to not only say, hey, we are able to offer you the infrastructure and the knowledge of the Canadian uh, people that is necessary to successfully expand into the Canadian wireless government, or Canadian wireless industry, but also it's an opportunity to take the wireless infrastructure that rural Canada simply doesn't have and expand it. 
One of the most effective parts of Altiosar is the fact that in rural Canada, it's very difficult to build up the infrastructure necessary uh, to provide them. And as Evan said earlier, Canada is shown behind, in terms of the wireless industry, behind most developed nations. We believe Altiosar is an opportunity for uh, Gentile to partner with them and step into uh, a partnership that could lead to wireless and strong connectivity and interoperability with uh, the entirety of the Canadian people. In short, although Altiosar could be a very powerful ally, we believe that Gentile is even more, uh, could be even more successful by positioning itself as the premier partner for technological innovators seeking to ex uh, expand into the Canadian market. In essence, we believe partnering with innovators, whether from America, Canada, Mexico, China, or have you, we believe that Gentile can position itself through the service it already offers, through the consulting uh, practice that we've built out through Airtel, as well as uh, just the infrastructure that uh, Gentile already possesses, we believe there's the opportunity to expand and become that prime, premier partner. In essence, this would allow uh, Gentile to position itself ahead of any market disruptions because it would be on the very cutting edge, bringing innovative technologies to the Canadian people and to the show. Uh, I'd like to pass it over to Evan now, who's going to discuss a little bit more about implementation. So we think the best part of the C01 strategy is how kind of all the initiatives and recommendations build upon one another in an implementable time. Starting with the consulting with Airtel, we believe that this can be done within the next few months. Airtel currently has the human capital necessary to shift over to some of its consulting uh, services. And also with merger from Bell and uh, Roger, we believe that there's even more resources to build. <coughs> so basically in the next few months, there will be structural staff changes and Looking to work with partners and SMEs, recruiting companies, and starting to build that out through the next few years. After that, there's the FirstNet. FirstNet is currently accepting applications for vendors to cover all of this infrastructure, and so we believe that sending in applications now to cover areas like Montana, North Dakota, like I said, Fort Michigan, can be implementable by about 2017 and start growing revenue there, albeit like I said, slowly before, but if the US government likes what we're doing, much rapidly after that. And then again, looking into Canada whenever that begins uh, process, which we anticipate to be around 2018, 2019. Lastly, uh, as Ryan mentioned, Altio we believe that they're taking in their funding from Cisco currently, and they're going to do a lot of work in the United States first. And after we solidify ourselves as the Canadian first uh, first end provider, uh, we have an even stronger value proposition to bring them in closer to 2020, 2021. In terms of financial impact, we believe that this is the opportunity to bring in $1.5 million in incremental operating income uh, in 2021, aggregating out to about $6 million in the same time period. Uh, we believe that this is relatively conservative at the moment because it's been hard to estimate sort of what the U.S. government, what the Canadian government would want to do and wants to pay. So we believe that despite these numbers, there's, and the compound annual growth rate from about 6.3% of this year's operating income, that there's even more potential to so now I'm going to pass it back to May, who's going to talk about our risks and other strategies. So as we said, we are proposing a bold strategy, and there are certain risks associated with the strategy. The biggest risk is if Aliotar, our partnership with Al Altiostar falls through. Therefore, if it does fall through, we're unable to leverage their innovative telecom technologies. However, we do have a mitigation plan for if this happens. If our partnership with Altiosar does fall through, we can still position ourselves as the premium partner for any foreign telecom innovator to enter, who wants to enter the domestic Canadian market. The biggest, the most impactful risk to our strategy is if the Canadian government simply doesn't want to roll, roll out a public safety communications plan like FirstNet in the US. Should this happen, we still believe that Glentel can take advantage of the existing infrastructure and still provide something that FirstNet does within the provincial and regional governments. We do believe that we are offering Glentel a comprehensive strategy that will all, not only sustain short-term profits, but also position Glentel for long-term growth while better serving its customers. While analyzing the case that we were given, we did come up with some alternative approaches, which included wireless backhauling, selling off some divisions, as well as bundle packaging. However, we felt that our COM strategy really stood out and could really position Glentel to be a market leader in the Canadian industry. In conclusion, we propose that 
Glentel, we propose that Glentel transform Airtel into the premium SME telecom consultant, operate in the U.S. via FirstNet, and finally move forward with a partnership with Altiostar to offer technology to offer technologies to all Canadians all across the country. We believe that this proposal can help increase an help Glentel increase an additional <coughs> one point five million dollars in added operating income by 2021. <coughs> Our comp strategy is a strategy that will not only help Glentel sustain its current growth, but also position itself for long-term success and better serve its customers. Thank you for your time, and we'd now like to answer any questions you may have. So um, obviously, it's getting it is a little difficult, especially in the LMRS sector, because to keep costs down, they want to leverage as much existing infrastructure as possible. But at the same time, we're receiving over 10 billion US dollars from the US government, and we believe that there's going to be a lot of work which we can the US and the global satellite industry. I was on research reports that said it actually is beneficial for national security to diversify uh, your satellite networks across effectively, uh, providing access to information. And so we've been positioning ourselves in that respect, especially um, since we're not looking for profitability, it allows us to engage in more <coughs> other measures to really gain that exposure and, and take on that lower price to get it to the U.S. first. That's a good question. Quite, I asked you who your competitors were. Like, who else will be going after this first and uh, this government service? Mm -hmm. um, who, who are you bidding Sure, so it's going to be sort of other commercial satellite providers such as GOI, um, who do more of the Google Earth type of things, but they focus in a lot more on imagery as opposed to uh, commercial communication. And so that's why we also think we have that competitive advantage there. So I think as we begin to think about volatility, we wanted to provide clients an opportunity to hedge itself against that volatility. We're not saying get rid of your uh, business with mine. We're not saying get rid of your business with energy. We believe that those are core elements of the Glentel business. We believe that the SME uh, market, as well as FirstNet and other partnerships down the road, is an opportunity to, uh, when the, so let's say, silver market is way down, Glentel is not as impacted by that as many are when the vast majority of the revenue is coming from those volatile sectors. So we view this strategy more as an opportunity to diversify, uh, to spread out that risk across the multiplicity of uh, industries as opposed to um, being <coughs>
Um, so we believe it was more of a greenfield approach because, again, a lot of the infrastructure already exists in the U.S. And so it would not be something intense building a lot of uh, RN approaches. It would more just be looking to get new sets on the ground. Um, and just a few of them, just to, again, really get the feet wet and provide that case study for uh, the community government. And then why do you think the U.S. government would be in favor of doing that? I want to go around a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, so I believe this is the report, and I think we forgot to put it in the appendix, but um, we found statistics that say that um, diversifying global satellite networks actually is a benefit to national security, and so we would phrase the pitch to the U.S. government in that respect. And then also because profit is not a main objective within uh, getting into FirstNet, not for the short term, uh, we believe that we'll be able to drop our prices compared to competitors a little bit more and provide more of a value proposition to the U.S. government as well. That. Is that a big thing you see being in the world line chain as opposed to the world line? Is it the U.S. is the intent of the world line chain that is not going to be a lot of But is it that you see that it's a loss of leader in the U.S. and you have a piece of the U.S. and you have a piece of the U.S. and you have a not just the bear market in terms of having the rural areas to cover uh, the, the first net, which is where we're looking at some sort of specialized and being niche in those rural areas that are hard to sell LTE coverage, but also just because we have infrastructure and already, so it's going to be less costly to take advantage of, whereas going into the U.S. and trying to do a joint venture or green building is very costly, um, not necessarily worth it, even how much more saturated it's going to be, whereas we'd be a first mover in the Canadian first net. I think one other key aspect of FirstNet is that the entire purpose is to cover every square inch of American soil with a, a network that is only accessible to public safety. <coughs> and just thinking about the landmass of Canada, there is obviously you know, vastly more just yards of, or meters of space in Canada. Um, <laughs> sorry. sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
um, enterprise and has already been able to bring these product offerings that have uh,